over the last 10 years, I've been pretty busy doing a lot of different projects and being busy with family and health and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's been a while, but anyway, uh, 2025, I believe is going to be my last year out in the, the field and working for a company. So I thought that at this point in time, it'd be a good time to, to get back into YouTube and maybe, uh, uh, pass on some of the stuff that I've learned over the last few years, like doing some filmography, uh, the IR scanning of, uh, electrical components and testing that's been uh, very interesting I spent a lot of time on doing power quality using the uh, fluke 1738 that's been a lot of fun too but I think the the most interesting that I've really been doing is working on automation and industrial control panels so I came across the software it's uh, by SkyCAD seems like a really cool software it's gonna be really good for training anyway I'll just show you around that real quick and if you have any interest in the other stuff the thermography or the power quality let me know and maybe I can fit in a couple videos on that so starting out here in the SkyCAD you have a table of contents you're gonna have this with really any um, industrial drawings that you have ladder diagrams schematics that sort of thing but anyway there's a lot to learn about that and we'll touch on a couple things as we go through here so this is basic uh, table of contents telling you what's inside in here we have a layout uh, I don't normally see this uh, in the past but uh, in, in general most of the time all I get is the ladder diagram and the, the schematics and the panels already there so most of the time they don't include this but it's great for the uh, the educational purposes of it at this time you get to see all your start stop buttons and uh, alarms and stuff and then the layout of the components uh, the nice thing about uh, uh, what we have here is we can put these components pretty much wherever we want we'll get them laid out and within a organized manner and we'll be able to figure out the the clearances between them this is a one-line diagram just as a quick reference you can go through and take a look and and see what you got for your main components here you get motors and PLCs and disconnects and of course your main power coming in this is your incoming power in a schematic form on a ladder diagram this happens to be an IEEE -E -E diagram sometimes I'll get uh, the IEC diagrams in but most of the time uh, these are the most common that I've seen in the States. So obviously you can kind of see the power coming in. You get a breaker, terminal block, and then that breaks off and goes out and uh, feeds an item. Or, and then you've got your three motors down here. That is, uh, oh, that's the ground block. But anyway, now we get back into this. The, the next one is the mains. And it shows a little bit more. This particular one right here uh, shows that this is a cable, and so like a VFD cable. That's a there's a lot of stuff to talk about on that one as well. VFD cables, uh, they come in many varieties and extremely expensive. Uh, coming off of um, the VFDs here. This is the field wiring where whenever you see a dotted line like this, this is kind of like some field wiring going through. And of course you got to have your ground. Same thing down here, you get field wiring. And here we've got the, uh, the gate controls. It's a ladder diagram, your starts, your stops, uh, relays, pilot lights, another one going into a controller here. And, um, same thing over here. You got your various different components. We'll be able to go into all that in, in greater detail. And with the controller, your ins and your outs. And here we get your crusher, crusher controls. Um, basically, same thing. These, this is some pretty straightforward stuff here. Once you once you get to know it, it's all about the same. Here's the actual PLC on it, and 
we have all of our um, ins outs it, the run, the trip, conveyor run, conveyor trip, crusher run, crusher trip. It uh, is a little bit more complex than this, but basically taking a look at it, once you learn these diagrams and you know what the pieces and parts are inside of a, a industrial control panel, uh, it, it comes together pretty easily. Some terminal blocks here, and this is just spelling out the, the type and size and where they belong in the panel, what they go to. And I, you'll see that in a minute here, a couple pages down. Another terminal block, um, usually the green and yellow is a, uh, your ground. And then you, that would snap onto a DIN rail that goes back to the other uh, drawing of the panel layout. It has all the DIN rails in there. And it basically tells you locations and such. Panel backplate, what everything is on that. More terminal blocks. I, there's sometimes there's 50 terminal blocks in a in a control panel. And then you start getting into your parts list, and each one of these specifically spells out the part that the designer is wanting to install in the cabinet. More parts list. And this one is bill of materials. That would be uh, the cabinet, the handles, the push buttons, uh, everything that goes inside of one of these cabinets. And we got a wire list here. Um, all the terminals and wires have markings on them. So it's kind of like, uh, I want to say it's a no-brainer, but uh, it can be kind of a problem every once in a while if you don't get those wire labels right. So whatever wiring goes on the inside of a cabinet from one component to another component has to match the wiring going out to any devices, um, maybe some proximity sensors or lasers or um, whatever the case may be. Uh, you have to make sure that whatever's out in the field comes back in and has to be landed on the correct terminal in order for all of this to work. Sometimes one thing off can screw the whole system up. Another wire list. So like I said, there's there can be hundreds of wires, thousand wires in some of these cabinets. Another wire list. This one is the cable and I.O. connectors list. So this one coming off of uh, the, the PLCs and kind of basically tells you where everything is going. Uh, so not only do I have the uh, design software that, uh, that we can go through and do a little bit of training on, I also have this program and it's actually pretty slick that uh, I could actually put the diagrams, the ladder diagrams in here and do some testing to make sure that everything's going to work. Uh, this, this one's pretty fun. Uh, it's even got sound effects on it, so I'll turn it on. I'll go down and turn the main on, and you can see that we've got uh, our power out. It's going down to the transformer, going to the circuit breakers before it heads out to the motors via the contactors and such. So I want to turn on the first breaker, turn on the second breaker, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit the start on this. Or on a uh, timer down here. So the siren's going off right now and it is not going to uh, kick that motor on until it's ready. See that one just kicked on. Now there's also a little bit of a time delay before the, the conveyor kicks in. So their conveyor just kicked in there. But anyway you can go through and you can test all these different things and let's say you've got the uh, emergency stop. You got a little bit of a problem, and I can't get this. I don't think I can get this whole thing on the screen here. There it is. But if I go down here and hit the emergency stop, you'll notice that these two motors will just shut down immediately. So let's check this out and see if my design works. There we go. Shut it all off. So, anyway, that's just another uh, another program that we got for training. And uh, hopefully this will be 
something that you guys are interested in and I can pursue a little bit myself because I just I love doing this stuff and I love helping others learn how to do it so thanks for watching and uh, have a great day talk to you later